Hello, I'm Eric Combs with the Sound Beginnings Beginner Band Series and also with the Facebook blog Thoughts from a Beginning Band Director and I'm the 2020 Illinois Teacher of the Year. This video that I've put together for you is one on how to make virtual ensembles like the one that you see in this clip. Virtual ensembles can be a lot of fun to make by yourself, like the one that you just saw that I made, but also they're very useful if you are teaching music ensembles remotely. With the COVID-19 pandemic that's been going on, a lot of teachers aren't seeing their students in person, so this would be a method that you could get all of your students together in one video playing the same song, as if they were playing a song at a concert. So this video is going to show you how to do that. I've also made a website to go along with it, and you can see it down in the uh, text below. If you go to this website, you can find links to individual parts of this video, so you can go straight to where you want to, but also it breaks down some of this stuff in text if you'd rather read it. Um, on, the, on the website, you'll also find the finished product that we're going to make through this video, as well as the full video that I just showed you a clip from. So. This video is going to break this down in five steps. Step number one is going to be to record the audio. In step number two, we're going to mix this audio together. And I'm going to show you how to get the free program Audacity, which is fantastic. And I'm going to show you how to use Audacity so that you can mix your audio together. In step three, uh, it's going to be lip syncing style. We're going to, I guess, finger sync. <laughs> over this finished audio file that we made so that it looks like we're playing along with it. In step four, we're going to mix the finalized audio and these video clips that we've made together in a program called Wii Video. And I'm going to show you where to find Wii Video and how to use Wii Video to make your final product. Wii Video is actually the program that I'm using to make this video that you're watching. And in step five, the easiest one, we're going to publish the video so that people can watch it. In step one, we're only concerned with getting some audio recorded. Now it's okay if we do this in conjunction with video, that's fine, because in the next steps we're actually going to take that video out and we're just going to rip the audio out of it. But however you want to get the audio is perfectly fine. In fact, you're probably going to be doing this with a group of kids, which means everybody's going to be doing it differently. But however they can get it is going to work. They can do it probably with their, their phone cameras, most of them will do it that way, or with the computer camera and microphone. On my PC, I just go down to the search bar on the home screen and I type in camera and it comes up with my computer camera that I can use. And I have also done this with a camcorder. In fact, all of the recordings that I ever do, I do with this camcorder, which cost me about $175 at Walmart, and I got a tripod that I use along with it, and it's what I'm actually recording this video with right now. You could also use external microphones like these condenser microphones that I'll tell you about a little bit more later. However they want to do it's fine, but a tip would be make sure that the students don't clip out whenever they do this. And clipping out means that they're playing so loudly or so close to the microphone that it gets a staticky sound to it that's just really nasty. There's no way to edit that out. So the students themselves are going to have to make sure that doesn't happen before they send it. And that's just a matter of playing softer or moving farther away from the microphone. I would suggest that students, whenever they're going to make their recordings, um, set up a test where they can just start recording and then record from di different distances away from the microphone, see which one sounded the best before making their actual recording. But step one has some steps in of itself. Uh, the first part is you have to make sure that everyone has the correct sheet music, obviously. Now you can either give them paper sheet music that you can mail to them or I don't know how you want to do it, you can send them electronic copies. Um, I like to use smart music because if everybody has a smart music subscription, 
That means that everybody can pull their part up on smart music, but it's kind of an obvious thing that everybody has to have the right music. The second thing that you need to do is make sure that everyone records their parts at exactly the same speed and in the same key. This is obviously important because if you have one person going really fast and another person going really slow, the parts aren't going to mix together. They have to be playing exactly the same speed. Now there's a couple of methods to do that. You could have the kids set a metronome to a specific tempo. And of course if they do that, they're going to have to wear, wear earphones so that the recording device doesn't pick up the metronome. An even better way to do it would be to have every single one of the students to listen to the same recording in their headphones and play along with it. Since it's in the headphones, the microphone won't pick it up, but the microphone will only pick up them. So what I have done in the past is gotten a professional quality recording of whatever it is that I'm wanting the kids to record. They listen to that while playing along with it. To make my video, I needed audio in my headphones to listen to so that I could play along with it. Now, the, the audio that you were hearing was me, but I was listening to this recording that I found on the internet. That was what was going through my earbuds. Now, what you can do is you can right click and go to view page source, and you're gonna see the programming language for this page and I'm going to scroll down near the bottom and I am going to look for a file that's named uh, .mp3. There it is right there. So in the web page you have an audio player that is playing this file. I'm going to control C to copy it and I'm actually just going to paste that file now into my browser and there's that actual file on the internet so that's how you find the file on the internet and from here I can download it and voila my computer now has this audio file from there it's just a matter of putting it into your headphones and then finally, you have to specify how the recordings will be turned in. I have found that the easiest way to do this would be to create a Google Drive folder for everybody to turn their assignments into that folder. They can upload them onto there. You can also put the sound file into that Google Drive folder so that kids can uh, download the file to listen to while they make their recording. And some kids, you'll find out, don't like uploading their, uh, their videos onto that Google Drive folder because really anybody on the internet could see that and some people just don't want others to see what they're playing. So in those cases, uh, they could upload it onto their own drive and share the link with you or perhaps they could try to share that through email. Um, there's really a whole lot of different ways that they can do that. Now, I'm gonna show you how I recorded my audio for the clip that I showed earlier for the Harry Potter clip. So what I use is a condenser microphone, a set of them, and these condenser microphones are hooked into a, um, an interface that plugs directly into my computer through USB. Now this is the audio box USB that I bought for about $350. And I also purchased the boom stand for it to go onto so that I can raise it up. I use this stand in band a lot of the time in my ensemble classes and at, at uh, concerts also so that I can record my concerts. It's really nice to have a computer next to me during band because I can use these microphones set up in the front of the classroom to record what the band is doing and then immediately play it back to them through some Bluetooth speakers that I have in the room. But as you can see here, if I play an instrument into these condenser microphones, it automatically goes into my computer into a program that I have that's called Audacity. And I'm going to show you more about that in step two.
In step two, we're going to mix down the audio that we have recorded and collected. Right here, you can see I'm looking at the website that I've created for this video. And there's a link here that says this link. If I click on that, it takes me to this address where you can download Audacity. Audacity is a very powerful sound editing software that's also free. So I highly recommend this. You can use whatever software you want, but I, I love this one. You can download it for Windows or for Mac from this website. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and pull it up. And this is what you see when you first open Audacity. It's just a blank screen. There's a couple of options here that you'll want to go to first. By default, this is showing you that your microphone is your internal microphone and your speaker will be your external um, computer speaker. Now you can change that. If I were to plug in headphones, those would come up for external speakers. Or if I were to plug in my external microphone, that would show up here. But I don't have them in, so it's not showing up. So whenever I hit record, you're going to see what happens here. So this is just the test record because I'm showing you what it looks like when you hit record and you can see the different sound waves appearing. I'm going to hit stop and I'm going to hit play, show you what happens. So this is just the test record because I'm showing you what it looks like when you hit record and you can see the different sound waves appearing. Now I'm going to show you some of the different things that you can do here. First of all, you can select area and you can hit delete and that gets rid of some of the dead space. Say that you want to add more space. I can click here and put generate silence for however many seconds you want. I'm going to put five seconds in and that splits it up so you have some silence there. I can also change the volume a couple of different ways. One way is to use this volume slider right here. So this is just the test record because I'm showing you, there's my silence and I'm going to make it a little quieter. What it looks like when you hit record and you can see the different sound waves appearing. Now that's handy whenever you have several different instruments in there and you can balance them generally using that slider. I'm going to take this silence back out because that's just really weird. Maybe you don't want to amplify just the entire track, maybe you just want to do a part of it. So what you can do is you can select what you want to amplify. And there is a, a list of effects here, all kinds of effects. You can fade in, fade out. I'm going to go to amplify. And this is just going to be a slider that's uh, showing the number of decibels. You can preview it, what it looks like when you hit record. And what it looks like when you hit record. So we know we don't want to do that. Maybe I want to make it quieter. What it looks like when you hit record. And there you go. So that would be a very important tool if maybe you wanted to bring out the flute section. Uh, so you you would um, <clears throat> go through here and you would amplify, which kind of reverse amplify everybody else, and then maybe boost the flutes so that you can hear them a little bit better. Control Z also works on this, which is this is a PC. Now that's the undo. So I put it back the way that it was. Um, there are pitch adjustments. So maybe this entire thing is flat. I can select the entire thing, or I can just select the entire thing by clicking over here. And I can go to change pitch. So this is just a test record because I'm showing you what it looks like. And you can hear yourself sounding like you had helium there, or you can do this. It works on instruments, too. So those are the extremes. But you'll notice that if I go to a small percentage change here, that it doesn't change it. So this is just a test record because I'm showing you. What so that is something that I've had to do in the past just because people are a little bit out of tune. And this is just a matter of kind of checking it maybe with a, a tuner. Um, maybe you can have a drone note going just to see if they're in tune. Sometimes you have to do that. I'm going to hit cancel here. Um, this isn't something you're going to do whenever you're doing your remote or your virtual ensemble, but I'm going to show you just because it's fun. Change the speed. So this is just a test record because I'm showing you what it looks like when you hit record. So that's something you can do. I'm going to undo that. Or to select just the end of it and go to fade out, then you would see that it would fade out right there. Also, there is a reverb uh, under the effects. 
and you can mess around with this and get whatever reverb you want. Let's see what I have. So this here. is just a test record because I'm showing you what it looks like when you hit record and you can see the different sound waves. So that's kind of cool. So we're going to add that in there. Now, you can also copy and paste things. So I'm just going to select the whole thing and hit my copy command there. You could also do it up here. For me, it's control C because I'm using a PC. I'm going to add another track by going to tracks, add new stereo track. And I'm just going to paste this. And you know what? I'm going to change the pitch of this slightly by going to effect, change pitch, and we're going to make this lower by quite a bit. And now we'll see what this sounds like. So this is just a test record because I'm showing you what it looks like when you hit record and you can see. So I've got my voice going twice. I've got it up here. I'm going to hit solo so you can hear just it. So this is just a test record because I'm also showing you here. what it looks like when you hit record and you can see the different sound waves appearing. And what you notice that I did there is by hitting solo on a track, you'll hear just it. Let's go ahead and add one more track. Another stereo track. And I'm going to put this voice back in again, but this time I'm going to go to effect, um, change pitch, and I'm going to make it a little higher. So now I've got my voice in here three times. So this is just a test record because I'm showing you what it looks like when you hit record and you can see the different sound waves appearing. So this is how they do a lot of effects in movies to make people sound crazy. Um, now, you'll notice that I can also hit mute to mute that track and I can hear what these two sound like together. So this is just a test record because I'm showing you what it looks like when you hit So even though this sounds really weird, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you that you can play whichever ones you want by themselves, or you can mute some. You can turn up volumes on certain ones, and you can test. So this is just a test record, because I'm showing you what it looks like when you hit record, and you can see the different sound waves appearing. All right. Maybe these are instruments, and maybe they are just a little bit offset from each other. And they're not lining up quite right. It's gonna sound something like this. So this is just, oops. So this is just so a test record, 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 just visually, I'm going to select this part here that doesn't quite line up, and I'm going to delete it. And it looks like it's still a little bit off. Let's see what that sounds like. So this is just a test. All right, still not quite right. So I'm going to delete a little bit more. So this is just a test record because I'm showing you. What and you can see that I was able to visually line stuff up. Now let me show you what you can do with this with band instruments. So this is a single file that I just recorded with my external speakers a moment ago. It's a flute playing kumbaya. In fact, I recorded three flutes, three clarinets, three trumpets, and three baritones. But I have to record these individually, and whenever you have people send stuff into you, it'll be sent to you individually. If you used Audacity to record this, you have to convert it into an audio file, a single audio file. So you go to File, Export, and Export as MP3. It'll ask you how you want to save it. And you can see I've saved all of those MP3s up there. Those are all MP3s. You hit Save. It's going to come up with this screen. You just hit OK, and it's done already. That's how fast it was. Um, it just saved an MP3 file for me. So now I'm going to go up, and I'm going to start a uh, new... Um, a new project here, and I am going to import by going to File, Import, Audio, all of these MP3 files. There's one of them, and I'm going to import another, Flute 2. I'm going to go ahead and import Flute 3. 
I want you to notice something here that is happening. It's hard to see all of them because they're so big. So what you can do is you can click here in the dividing line and drag up and make these smaller so that it's easier to see everything. Also, I want to point out there's this little slider right here that I never use, but I want to show you what it is. It's left and right. Uh, and it's how you can pan the sound from left ear to right ear. So for instance, say you had surround sound or headphones, I could just make this individual track all the way in the left ear or all the way in the right ear or partially, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it right on zero because I like to do that. And now you notice that these don't line up. In fact, give me a moment to, to uh, import everything. All right, now I have everything in here. And you can see over here that it tells you the file name. There's a little drop down menu that I can rename these if I want to. I can also move the tracks up to the top, down to the bottom, or up one or down one, just to get where you want it. Now, what I was saying is nothing is lined up. In fact, you can see the ends of these are all over the place, the beginnings are all over the place. So the very first thing that I'm gonna to to do is I'm gonna come through here and I'm gonna delete just the space at the beginnings of all of these. So I have deleted all of the um, dead space at the beginning of each one of these, but they're still not quite lined up yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. And I'm going to move to the very beginning of this. And as I zoom in, I can get to see the sound waves a little clearer and where, the, where they start. And you can see that it's just kind of jagged here. So I like to... Just do two at a time. And I'm going to do these top two flutes. Now I hit solo on one of them, and I'm going to hit unmute on another one. Now it's just these two that are playing. Let's see what happens. They're just slightly off. And I can see that what I need to do is delete this a little bit right there. That should sound better. Exactly. Okay. And I'm going to bring down the volume a little bit. Both of those. All right, let's add in a third one here. So I'm going to unmute flute three. Looking right here, it looks like it's probably lagging behind a little bit. So let's delete a little bit. Let's see what that sounds like. I'm listening to this. I I feel like I need more flutes. And now my flutes are lined up. Now you might find out that one of them's way too far forward. And in that case, you would just click here and you would go up to generate silence and that'll back it up a little bit. And then you can delete what you need. Now, as I'm looking through here, this actually is going to be fairly easy. I'm just going to visually line this stuff up. Let's see if it worked. Clarinet one, add it in. Yep. Clarinet two, is it lined up where it needs to be? And let's see if clarinet three is where it needs to be. possible to go through and fine tune things like if you see right here that those are a little off which I'm looking at a tenth of a second you can't really hear it but if you wanted to fine tune you could you can go in and you can get those exactly lined up to where you want them um, right now you can tell that it's pretty close though all right moving down to the trumpets now I have a problem to where I'm gonna have to add some silence so I'm just gonna go with Half a second. Yeah, there we go. Because we're really zoomed in here. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Generate silence for a half a second. Move it up. Generate silence. Half a second. Move it on up. 
You just want to get it as close as possible. And finally, we have our baritones as well. Generate silence. All right, I'm guessing that's gonna be pretty close. Let's hear what the baritones sound like by themselves. Now, you probably noticed something when I played that. It's clipping out. It was turning red up here and it just had a really raspy sound to it. That's because it's overloading now with all of these sound files being added together. We're getting too much sound. In fact, if I were to play the entire thing, it's going to clip a lot. So I'm just going to um, select everything. Add sound. So let's go up to select all. And I am going to go to effects, amplify. I'm going to bring down the volume of everything. That'll keep it from clipping. I like to do this after I've lined everything up because now you can see after I've done that, you can't really see your sound your sound waves anymore. But this should sound better. All right, you'll probably notice here it's really hard to see where those sound waves are, where they start and stop. So I am going to actually make them loud again. I, I will uh, make them quieter here whenever I finish up, but I want to be able to see where they're at so that I can cut the end of this out just by selecting it and hitting delete. I gotta get this one too. There we go. Okay. And that cuts out everything that's at the end. And then finally, what I would like to do is I want this to be on a loop. And every time that it's on a loop, I want to hear different groups of instruments playing. Now, in order to put it on a loop, what I'm going to have to do is select the entire thing. And, oops, I didn't select these up here. Select the entire thing. And I'm going to hit copy buttons, which you can either do that up in edit, or I use control C for my PC. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it all right beside it. I want to see what that sounds like. There's going to be a weird pause, I know. Not bad. Now keep in mind, I am going to make it quiet. Okay. So I'm just going to copy it a couple more times. All right. I paused and I made six copies of this. So now it goes through Kumbaya six times. By the way, this is Kumbaya from the book one of Essential Elements. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select all. And I'm going to add that uh, deamplification that I talked about a minute ago. And that should make it sound a lot better. It takes a while whenever you have so many instruments going. Okay, let's see if that sounds better. All right, I'm also, now that I still have it selected all, I'm gonna add effects. I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb to it, just to see what that sounds like. Now we add reverb, sometimes we gotta wait for it to uh, process the whole thing. You can do a preview of the reverb if you want to. Um, I already know what it's gonna sound like, so I didn't preview it. If you have kids that are a little iffy on their instrument, kind of like me on some of these instruments, Reverb can kill some of All right, so here's what I want to do. I know that for the first run through, I want to have nothing but flutes. So I am going to delete everything in the first run through. You can see all six run throughs there that is not a flute. So I'm just going to go through here and select. And I'm going to generate silence. And that just kills out everything that's not a flute for that first run through. I'll zoom in a little more just to make sure I caught the end of that. All right. 
for the second run through, I want to hear just the clarinets. So again, I'm going to select anything that's not a clarinet for the second run through, and I'm going to generate silence. I'm going to continue on doing this for all six run throughs, going just flutes, just clarinets, then one with a flute and two clarinets, then just trumpets, then one with a trumpet with two baritones, and then everybody. So let me pause the video while I finish that. All right, it took me about 15 minutes, but I finished this up. If you hear screaming in the background, it's because PE is outside the cafeteria. Due to COVID, they can't all fit in the gym. So they're in the cafeteria right outside my room here. I'm sure a lot of you know how that goes with COVID this year. Hey, you see here, I've, I've muted everything but the flutes. Now, instead of making you listen to the whole thing, I'm just going to zoom ahead. Here, I've muted everything but the clarinets. Here, I've got a flute playing the first part, two clarinets playing the harmony parts. I'm a woodwind player, so forgive me for this next one. All trumpets. Trumpet with two baritones. And everybody. Now, what I need to do next is convert this into one big audio file, one single audio file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Export, as an MP3, MP3 again, and I'm just going to save this as Final Mixed Down. And it says your tracks will be mixed down and exported as one stereo file. That's fine with me. That's what I want. I'll hit OK. And it does its magic. It doesn't take very long, especially for something this short. It's about three minutes long. All right, it's done. There are two other things about this step that I want to show you briefly. Number one is you're going to be getting audio files from all different sources. Perhaps the audio file that you get cannot be uploaded into Audacity. Well, one thing you can do is you can do a Google search for audio converter or um, whatever the name of the file extension is, of the file you're looking for, whatever it is, maybe it's a VID, I don't know, not VID. You type in VID to MP3 converter. Um, so then what you would do is you get a converter like this one here. And I mean, if you want to use this one, copy down that address. You're going to open the file that you want to convert, whatever that file is. You're going to put it on the quality you want. I always put it on MP3. And then it's just a matter of hitting convert. And what will happen is it'll take that audio file and it'll change it into a file that Audacity can read. The next scenario is nowhere near as fun to try to deal with. And it's probably what you're going to get from a lot of your kids. Probably they're going to take a video like the one that I'm taking right now. I'm using my camera that's in my computer to record a video that has audio, but you can't put that into Audacity. You're going to have to rip the audio from the video into MP3 format so that you can put it into Audacity. There are a trillion ways to do this, and I'm going to show you a couple. One of them is used what's called the VLC media player that's on some PCs, and this has a built-in converter. I'm going to wait for it to open up. VLC media player takes a while on my computer. So you go to media, and you're going to go to convert. And first I have to add the file that I want to convert. And I have it right here. And I have this on convert slash save. There. All right. Now, you choose what kind of file, file you want. I have audio MP3, and you have to choose where you want the destination to be. I'm going to put it on the desktop. A little um, glitch is I actually have to save this as .mp3. It took me forever to figure that out. 
you have to put the dot mp3 at the end of it or it won't convert it to the right one so i'm just going to put this as um, sample video dot mp3 and hit save and then start now it should be done already so if i click on sample video down here this is a file it just made the next scenario is nowhere near as fun to try to deal with, and it's probably what you're going to get from a lot of your kids. And there you have it. I was able to rip that audio. I can now take that audio that I just ripped, and I can put it into Audacity. It is possible, by changing some of these settings up here, to actually record into Audacity exactly what is being played through your computer. It's extremely complicated because it's different for every computer, and I'm not going to go into that for this. You have to, uh, you can do a Google search for it on how to record computer audio through Audacity, and you're going to find out that you're going to have to mess around with your computer settings. So I wouldn't recommend that. It, just know that it is possible if you want to go into it. Another solution, if you don't have the VLC player, which I recommend VLC player because it's so easy. Another option would be to get on the internet and just do a Google uh, search for ripping audio from video. For instance, I came up with uh, this one whenever I did it. There is the uh, there's the web address, and this one, same as earlier, you open a file from your computer, choose MP3, hit convert, it converts it for you, and then you can download it. Step three is to get some recordings of video that you can put along with the audio that you just created in step two. Now, for most things that you're going to be doing for school, you're actually going to skip this step. Because at school, typically the kids are remote. They make one recording that has the video and the audio and they send it straight to you. And you just mix down all of the audio from the first take. Now, for something more advanced, like what I'm doing, like the Harry Potter video that I made, or anything that involves any kind of sound editing where you're doing more than one take, then you're going to have to overdub some videos. So, um, you can choose your path on how you want to do this. If you want to do the quick route, skip this step. You're just going to use the video you've already collected. But if you want to make it a little more intricate, then you can go ahead and do this step. And there's not really much to tell you about this other than what you're going to do is make sure that um, the performer can hear the final recording that you made in step two. And it's okay to have that playing with an external speaker or with headphones or whatever. It doesn't matter. And I would say go ahead and play along with it and actually make noise and record it using whatever you want, uh, whatever camera you want, a phone a computer, a camcorder, doesn't matter. Because in the next step, you're going to completely turn the sound off from that video. And we're not going to worry about the sound from the video. We're going to use step two's audio and step three's video. So go ahead, collect some video from every single one of the instruments that you've already done, which means for me, I'm going to collect three videos of flute, three videos of clarinet, three of trumpet, and three of baritone. And after I'm done with that, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you what to do with the next step. We're going to move on to step four. In step four, we're going to mix together the video that we've made and also the audio that we have collected and mixed down. I'm using a program called Wii Video. I like it because it's very powerful, works very well, it's easy to use, and it's cheap. You can also get a free trial version that lasts, I think, for a month, and um, it'll give you enough time to make one of these projects to see if you want to keep on using it or not. Another program that I'm aware of that is very good is Adobe Premiere, but it's much more expensive. So I've got it open right now to my dashboard. I can Here's my projects. Um, these are completed projects. I did one that was called Rise Up, one that was called Lean On Me. Um, of course, I'm making one now that's called my video. I'm going to show you this. This is the video that you're actually watching right now. And I'm making it as I am um, building it together as I film it. So this down here is a zoom in and zoom out button on our storyboard. These are different tracks 
similar to what you would have on the uh, audio mixing program. I've got video track one, video track two, video track three. And as I take pictures and make screen recordings and that kind of stuff, I throw it up in here. This is my, my media. And I upload it to this. Like, for instance, there's the Harry Potter, Potter video. This is a preview place. I'm, I'm just going to show you what happens. I'm going to click on a certain spot on this and hit play. And I have this on convert slash save. That's a previous part of this video. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do with this. You can even make text boxes, um, like all of the different parts of this video where it says like, for instance, step one, step two, step three. Um, I've got those inserted in here as well. But right now it probably looks pretty confusing. So I'm going to break this down and show you how to do it from scratch. So I'm going to go back to wevideo.com. And I'm going to go back to this projects tab. And I'm going to click on the create new project. Title. Um, Let's call this the sample video. I'm going to hit next. You can always add project media to your media tab. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to hit next. It's done. All right. Create video. It's going to ask you which direction you want it. The one that I'm making is this direction so that you can have a phone turned sideways and start editing. You see that it's blank down here. Um, this is full right now. For you, it'll be blank because it's got all the media that I've uploaded. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add a background. And I'm just going to randomly pick this one. And I'm going to put it in video one spot right there. Now... The next thing I want to do, oh, I want to be able to view this a little easier. So I'm going to change the view. Okay. And I need to upload by right clicking here, um, import here in the My Media, browse to select. I'm going to upload the final mix down that we made. All right, and it's uploading. It's going to take a second. One of the things I like about this program is you can still mess around and edit this stuff while it's uploading. I'm going to put that in audio one right here. And let's see what we got so far. This is a picture of the video right here. All right. So we've got, we've got our audio. Now we're going to have to start adding some of the, um, the video to this. And the trick is going to be we have to line up the video in time with the audio. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to show you another example. Right now I'm taking a video of myself with my computer camera. And right now the audio is actually matched up with my mouth. What we're going to do is we're going to take this video, I'm going to rip the audio out of it like I just showed you a second ago, and we're going to have a video file and an audio file, and I'm going to show you how to put them together. Okay, for this example, I am going to take the audio that I just created, and I'm going to put it in the audio track. Let's listen to it. Right now I'm taking a video of myself with my computer camera. All right. I always like to zoom in. And then I, this moves you from left to right through time from the beginning to the end of your file. And this zooms you in and out. And as I do that, you can see the ruler um, expanding up here. Similar to what, when we used Audacity, I can also uh, make these smaller just by clicking on the down arrow here and just choosing that. And I've also got the video that I just took, so I'm going to put that on there. Now I hit play, and it 
should theoretically match up because they're both the same thing. Right now, right I'm now taking I'm video, video, of, video myself of myself with my, with my camera. camera. <laughs> I guess theoretically doesn't always pan out. So that doesn't, didn't sound quite right. Now, what I can do is I can go over here to video one, which is the actual video that we're looking at. And I can click on the three dots and I can mute the track. You can solo the track, you can mute the track. So now we're hearing the audio from the actual audio file, but we're not hearing the audio from the video. Here's what that's going to look like. And right now, the audio is actually mashed up with my mouth. Okay, that's just not right at all. So what we're going to have to do is match up the video with the audio. Now I can move the video left and right this direction, which just moves the entire file. I can also trim it by clicking here, and I'm, tr I'm actually trimming off the beginning of this. I can do the same thing to the end, which means that I'm deleting dead time from the beginning. So I'm going to mute the audio for just a second, and I'm going to solo the video. And I want to see right when I start talking. Somewhere around the two second mark. Okay, so I'm going to cut out everything before that by clicking here and dragging. And you can actually see the video there of when my voice starts. Okay, let's see what. Okay. I need to unmute it. Taking a video. This is the tedious part. I found that sometimes it's good to put a click track at the beginning, like maybe a count off, one, two, ready. That way you can kind of hear it and know when it's gonna start. Right now. Okay, right now. Let's see if I can get it right up to when my mouth opens. I usually take a breath in before I speak. So. Right now. There we go, okay. Now I'm going to move that all the way back over to the beginning, and it should start right when I say right now. Right now I'm... Okay. Let's mute that again. Mute track. And we're going to unmute this one. I also need to unsolo that one. All right, so now I'm hearing just the audio. I want to get it to right where it starts speaking as well. Right now I'm... Okay. You can see it's going to be right there. Let me check, make sure that's right. Right now. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to click and cut out the beginning. And I'm going to move that right up to there. Right now I'm taking a video of myself with my computer. Okay, you can see that I've gotten it close now. And this is where it gets kind of tedious. So... Zoom back out a little bit more. What I do know is that I'm really, really super close. And that if I move it one direction or the other, and I'm talking about this track right here, they will match up. I'm just going to try moving this direction and see if that does it. Right now I'm taking a video of myself with my computer camera. Pretty close. Um, if I would have, it's kind of like tuning, you know, you go one way and it gets worse, you know, you went the wrong way. If I would have gone the other way, it would have been something like this. Right now I'm taking a video of myself with, and that wouldn't have been cool at all. Right now I'm taking a video of myself with my computer camera. And it's still not quite completely there, so I'm going to move this, this direction a little bit. Right now I'm taking a video of myself with my computer camera. Exactly. So I've matched it up. And that's how you match the video to the audio. And whenever you have music going, you can actually turn both of the tracks video on until you get it matched up completely. And then you can mute the first video. Okay, let's take what we just learned here and let's apply that to music. Now we're going to see how to do this with the videos that we've created. 
I have done one thing that I want to point out. Originally, this border that I, or the background that I put on here, didn't go the full length of the song. So what I did is I clicked on it and I stretched it so that the background would last the entire length of the song. Over here, again, is the media that I've imported. I've imported three flute tracks so far. Remove my face over here so you can see the video. And I also want to point out that whatever is lowest in this deck over here is going to be what is farthest away in the background. That's why I put the background in video one here. In fact, I can click on it and I can, there we go, change the title of it. I'll put this to background. And then whatever I put in the tracks above it are actually going to cover it up. That's why we want to make sure we put it there in the background. So I'm going to move my flute one down to uh, video two there. And I'm going to move it all the way to the beginning. Like this. Okay. Now, if I want to add another track, I can hit the plus sign and I can name it. If I, in fact, the next track I'm going to do is going to be flute two. You can click it, it's going to be video. And you'll notice later, whenever I pull flute two down to this, it's actually going to cover up flute one. But that's not a problem because we're going to fix that up here in a little bit. Label this flute one. You'll be able to hear all of them at the same time. You just won't be able to see them all at the same time. Kind of like I've, how I've covered up the background right now. Now, I'm going to mute flute one otherwise we're going to hear the video and the uh, mp3 playing at the same time so i got it muted there and let's see what we have so far so the music has started but i haven't even put the flute up in the finish yet. we got to figure out how to line that up obviously i'm going to have to uh, delete some of the time from the very very beginning of this so i've zoomed into the beginning i'm going to uh, Click on this flute one video. I'm going to go to the very beginning of it by using this slider right here. Okay. And I am actually going to trim off some of the beginning. And you can watch up in the video and see where I'm at so far. And as I do that, I'm going to move it back up to the front. Okay, trim a little bit more out. Coming out about five seconds. Flute goes up to my face. Drag it back to the beginning. Can I get a visual cue here? I'm going to take a breath on the flute. And luckily, I usually do a prep to do by raising up. And I'm watching my fingers to see when I play those first couple of notes. Looks like the first note's right about there. Okay, let's see if that uh, lines up at all. It looks like I'm close, but my video is actually a little bit ahead of the sound. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more back to the beginning of this by lengthening again. Okay, now let's try it. It's still just a little bit ahead. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I'm going to hit Control-Z. Okay, what I want to do is go to the very beginning here. So I'm going to pull it out. And I'm going to lengthen it by a couple of clicks. Okay, move it back to the beginning. And you can see that I'm getting closer and closer and closer, but I'm not quite there yet. So this is kind of a trial and error. There, I did a little bit more than I have been. Okay. That's pretty good right there. I'm going to call that lined up. Now, that does take a while. One one thing that I can... I'll give you two hints, actually. It'll make this easier. Hint number one would be maybe add a count-off to the beginning of the, of the uh, track that you're using 
and the count off can uh, be used as something to try to match up um, whenever you're lining these things up. Also, if you wanted to, you could turn on the audio on this flute one file and also uh, you'd hear both of them going at the same time and you could hear just how far off it is and you can drag it to uh, to get it closer that way but anyway what i've done now is i've lined up flute one with the music i'm going to pause the video and i'm going to go ahead and line up flute two and three and i'll be right back with you after i've done that so as you can see down here i've now added Flute 1, Flute 2, and Flute 3. And since Flute 3 is on top, that's what we're seeing over here in the preview, and that's all that we're going to see. I have all three of these muted, so you're only going to hear the background. Now, the problem is, how do we see Flute 2 and 1 also? And the solution is, we're actually going to shrink this and move it off to the side. And here's how you do that. You click on, on Flute 3 to select it, and we're going to work our way from the top down. You're going to hit the edit pencil, and you're going to have a slider here to change the size. And also, you'll see there's an X and Y axis that changes as I move it. So you can put it wherever you want. And you're going to want to take note of the different uh, numbers here. So I'm writing down that I have a 0.36 on the scale, and I want to put it. Uh, I already know where I want to put it. I'm going to type it in manually here. I want to put it at 49 uh, for the X and 55 for the Y. And I know that it's going to put it right there. And I'm going to hit save. Now, I can't change that again by clicking on it unless I go back over here to the pencil to edit it again. So now I've got flute 3 up in the corner. And I'm looking at flute 2 now, which is right below it. So let's select flute 2, hit the edit pencil. I'm going to shrink it down to the exact same 0.36 so that there's the same size. Now I could use a slider, or I could just um, type it in if I wanted to. Mm, okay, there we go. And I'm going to use those numbers that I wrote down a minute ago to help me line this up. I know that the Y is going to be 55. That lines up the top of the video with one over on the left. Um, there we have it. I'm going to hit Save. And now you have Flute 1 there on the very far background and I'm going to shrink flute one now and when I do so you're going to see the background appear behind it um, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than the others and I'm going to put it right here now if you wanted to do a whole lot of math you could figure out where the corners of this are to help with the numbers I did that when I made my Harry Potter right now I'm just going to eyeball it hit save changes and now we're going to see all three of these at the same time while uh, having the background behind it because it's the lowest layer and hearing only the file that we made. If you want to get creative, wear different shirts for each one of these, maybe go to a different location. I did this on the fly during a prep period. you're probably wondering how do I go from there to making all of the different instruments appear well in order to do that I'm actually going to have to go ahead and add in all of the instruments and line them up so let me pause while I do that okay so I have put all of the different instrument tracks in here the three baritones three trumpets three clarinets three flutes and I've lined them all up and right now, if you were to just play a random spot, you'd only see whatever's in the top here, which is baritone three. So what we need to do is now divide everything up. Before I do that, I'm going to show you how to do something in particular here. I'm going to add a new track here, and I'm just going to call it test track. And... Like I got a couple of them here already. <laughs> okay, there's my test track. And on my test track, I am going to just grab a random picture. Looking for an image file. Here's an image file. Um, there, let's use this one. I'm going to make it longer. And say that I want to move this from the bottom left-hand side of the screen up here to the top right. 
What I can do is I can drag my timer over to where I want to do that. And there's a scissors button here. As long as I have only this track selected and I hit the scissors, it's actually going to split it. But I want to show you that even though it's split, as I go from one side to the other, the image doesn't break. So you can't tell from watching it that it's split. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the one on the left, and I'm going to just drag it down to the bottom left, hit Save Changes, take the one on the bottom right. We're going to uh, shrink it, drag it up to the top right, Save Changes. And now notice whenever I play through this, that, that picture actually goes from down here in the bottom left to whenever it hits the divider here, it's going to pop up to the top right. So that's how I can change positions of things. Now let's delete this track and get it out of the way. I'm going to do the same thing on a large scale down here. What I want to do is I want to create dividers at the end of every course. Now I know that the first course is around the 29 second mark, so let's zoom in. Find exactly when that happens and hit pause. Right there it is. In fact, that's right where I had my clarinet start. Uh, you'll notice that I don't have anything in particular selected. And when I don't have anything in particular selected and I hit the scissors, it actually divides everything. So that divided up first chorus from the second chorus. Let's go ahead and divide um, another time the second chorus and the third chorus. And I know that happens around the 58 second mark. Right there at the 58. Now I'm going to zoom in so I can make that a little more precise. I'm actually watching my clarinet player up there to see when he takes a breath. It's going to be right out here. Now I'm going to hit the uh, cut button again. Zoom back out. And now you can see that I have two nice clean cut marks right here. Chorus 1, which we've already done. Here's Chorus 2. But the thing is, Chorus 2 is only clarinets. So now that I've cut this up, I can actually go through here and I can delete the unwanted video, which was the flute part. And now I only have clarinet. In fact, what I want to do is make this a little different configuration than what I had for the first one. So let's kind of do the opposite thing here. Put uh, three down in the bottom left. Let's put um, two down in the bottom right. And I didn't check to see the numbers on that. Let me go back here, make sure that it's right at six, four, eight. I'll line the tops of them up. There we go. And there we go. Now we're going to put clarinet one, which is soloing, a little bigger than the others. Not that big. And let's put it up here in the top. Now, everything doesn't have to be symmetrical like this. You can do it however you want. See what happens. So I went from the flute chorus to the clarinet chorus. You probably noticed it was really abrupt the way that that happened. Whenever I finish this and I make all six choruses the way that I want, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to put some finishing touches on it. I'm going to add transitions between one group to the next group. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to do that. But right now I'm going to pause it and I'm going to clip it up and um, get my six choruses and delete the unwanted stuff. And I'll show you the end result in a moment. So I'm done dividing it all up into sections and cutting out the parts that I don't need and layering it how I want. And I've also added in some transitions to the ends and beginnings of each section. The way I did that was I went up to this transitions button right here. And I'm just using this fade. I'm going to go into more detail later in the video talking more about these transitions, but I'm just dropping it like this. That's what all these little shaded things are. And that what that does is fades out like right here. 
Um, whoops. Now, I've done almost all of them. I wanted to do a couple more while you're watching, just so you can see what I'm doing. All right, first, first task is to find the transitions. Zoom out a little bit so I can see a little better. I left a couple to show you. I just got to find them. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to take this fade transition right here, and I'm just going to apply it to the beginning of some of these tracks so that it will fade in. But I want to show you that it's going to be a little more difficult between these two because here's what this does. I can't drop it to the end. It drops it to the end of one at the beginning of the other. And you see it doesn't quite line up. So what I'm going to do is actually go in here and change the duration to two seconds. And it's going to spread it out. And you can see that now it's the length that it needs to be. I'm going to have to do the same thing right here. And click on it. Change the duration to two. Just double it. And got one more to go here. Duration two, and looks like we have one more transition, and I believe that that is all of them. Now, I am finished. I'm going to go to the very beginning of this song and just show you a little bit of what we have. Now, this button right here will expand it so that we can see a full screen view. I'm going to delete my head here for a second. Just to show you what happens here near the end. <laughs> Not a very good trumpet player. All right, and as I was playing that, I can see that I still need to do a couple more little transitions that I missed there. But you get the gist of how to do it. I'm going to tweak just a couple more things in it, and then I'm going to post it in the website so that you can view the whole thing if you want to. But next, let me show you how to do some uh, subtitles and, and a little bit more about transitions. Now I want to show you how to do some of the effects that you saw in my videos and that you see in this video as well. So what I'm going to do is pull down a picture that you saw earlier in this video. In fact, I'm going to do a couple of them, and I'm going to layer them in different um, video tracks down here. So you can see that I've got a picture of my camera and then a picture of my boom um, up here. And notice what happens when I hit play. One of them pops into view. And immediately after this one's done you're going to see that uh, the second one pops into view. Now, there's a couple of things that I had to do here because, number one, um, add a track, you have all this dead space behind here. So you could go up to backgrounds and you could add in any random background behind all of this. Um, actually, I, could, I can't put it there because <laughs> it's going to be all that you see because it's in the foreground. So I'm going to have to do a little maneuvering here. Let's move this up. Let's move this up. I'm going to make this video a little shorter for the purposes of what we're doing. Put the background behind it. And now let's see what happens. Okay, so now you have that dead space off the sides. So up myself. Now I don't like the way that it just snaps from one to the next. It's just really abrupt. So there's some transitions here that you can mess around with. And what you're going to do is drag and drop a transition 
to the end of the first video and drag and drop that same transition to the beginning of the next video and then watch how it does a transition from one to the next. So that's how you can fade in and fade out. All of the transitions that you've seen in this video are actually this one right here, this cross dissolve. Um, I liked that one, so that's what I've been using. Let's see how that works. Dissolves out, comes back in. Of course, if you didn't have the background, it would just go, um, and I'll show you what it'd look like. It looks like this. Fades out, next one fades back in. So that's how you can add transitions. There's a whole lot of different transitions that you can choose from here. So you got your standard, and you can also click over here to get additional ones. That looks interesting. Let's see what happens. And you don't have to use the same one on the end of, of one transition into the beginning of the next. Okay, so that's what that does. Um, if you want the transition to be longer, you can just click on the transition and you can change the duration of it to make it longer or shorter duration. Or you can just click on it and hit delete to get rid of it completely, if that's what you'd rather do. So that's how you add transitions. You can also add text. Now there's folders over here. You have motion text, uh, static, um, season, seasonal, callouts. So you choose the one that you like. Um, the one that I have been using is called Swing right here. And you're actually going to just drop it in and make it the length that you want it to be for this. And you're going to go to Edit. And you are going to enter in your text. So I am adding. There we go. And I can go to Save Changes. And I can watch that. And it'll last as long as you tell it to last. So if I wanted to shorten it up a little bit, here's what would happen. And then it flies out like that. Now, a lot of the times you just want to want to use subtitles. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's take this one right here. And I'm going to add it. I just added it over the top of the video that I just made. And I got to be careful because if I put it below the video, you're not going to see it. But if I bring it back above the video, then you'll see it. And it just appears. It. So you can mess around with uh, different transitions and different effects, and you can come up with things to be just exactly the way you want them to be. Step five is the easiest step of all, and that's to publish this. Now you can do that however you want. You can uh, upload it onto Facebook. You can put it in a Google Drive. You can add it, embed it into a website, however you want to do that. But what you need to know is how to actually make a file out of this that can be viewed. So I have finished my video, and I've put the finishing touch on it here by adding some text, which you can see right here. It shows you uh, whenever you play, this is going to tell you what website to go to. And now I'm ready to compress it down to one file. So I'm going to hit the Finish button. And it's going to ask for a thumbnail. Choose whatever thumbnail you want. I'm going to, <laughs> these are some random things. You know what? It doesn't really matter because whenever I put this onto YouTube, I'm going to choose a different uh, thumbnail, thumbnail anyway. So we'll just go with that for right now. <laughs> um, it's going to ask you for the resolution. I am going to put this on full HD and this little button here just means that you're going to download it. It's going to actually send you an email when it's ready for it to be downloaded. You can name it. I named it Virtual Ensembles and I'm going to hit export. At this point, it's going to take a while. Sometimes it can take up to half an hour to do this. Um, Whenever it's done, you'll get an email. It'll give you a link that you can download it. 
I'm going to download it from there. I'm going to put it on YouTube and then I'm going to publish it out to several Facebook sites. Thank you for watching and I hope you got a lot out of this. I'm hope, I hope that you're able to make some videos of your own bands after doing this. If you do so, feel free to send me a message. The uh, best way to do that would be through Facebook Messenger. Um, send me a copy of what you made so that I can see, see what you've done. Also, if you have any questions whatsoever about any of this, feel free to, to message me as well. Thanks a lot.